Hello everyone, it's Gary here from Sage Ireland and in today's video we're going to go through um, how we can link in with your clients Sage 50 accounts um, using Sage Drive and then what we're going to do is we're going to pull the information from Sage 50 into Sage accounts production and we'll do a quick run through of uh, creating the management accounts and the statutory accounts um, for your client. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to verify that I'm connected to Sage Drive, that the, the client is correct, which is we can see up here, Gary's Motorcycles Limited. And we're also going to check the transaction number list um, is, as we'd expect, uh, 285 down, the, down, down at the bottom of the screen. We can also go to the help and the about screen to verify the last sync that took place with the drive. So from here, I can just page down and we can see the last sync uh, took place today um, at, you know, less than, less than a few minutes ago. Um, at this point, you would typically do a quick scan of the trial balance and balance sheet just to make sure um, everything looks as we'd expect um, and just to you know ensure that the latest data and the latest numbers um, are correct before bringing into account production. Um, probably best practice to do as many adjustments as you can within the client's data set as opposed to pulling out into account production. Okay, so the next step is um, once everything looks okay and as I'd expect, um, we're going to bring that data now into Sage Account Production. Now, two things to be aware of, Sage Accounts Production and Sage 50 need to be installed on the same machine in order for the link to work correctly. And then when we're bringing the data into uh, Sage Accounts Production, we have to ensure that the Sage 50 instance uh, is closed and we're logged out completely. Okay, so from here we're going to open up uh, Sage Accounts Production. We've uh, closed down uh, Sage 50 and we're ready to go. So when we open it up, uh, we can see that you know it's telling us we're on version 18.4, which is the latest version in the Republic of Ireland. And um, there's also a couple of notes on the screen about e-filing and dormant accounts and all the rest of it. We'll just go ahead and close that, and up pops then the uh, client list. Now. The client we're going to do for Gary's Motorcycles Limited, we've already got um, a set of accounts in there, but I'm going to go ahead um, and in this example, just you know ignore that they're there and create a new set. So in this example, uh, as I say, the client is Gary's Motorcycles Limited. Um, we've already got a you know draft set of accounts in there that you know we're not quite happy with, so we're just going to go ahead and add. So this would be typically if it's a, a different financial year or you want to you know do a second set um, of accounts for them. So we'll just enter the year and date of the uh, company itself. I'm just going to change the default directory and just add a number one at the end. I don't want it to overwrite the one I've got already. Um, you can password protect the final sets of accounts as well that we're working on, but for the sake of the demo, um, I'm going to leave it, um, leave that um, as is. And from here, I just select the FRS 102, 105 uh, because that's how the company set up. And you can see there we've got one for uh, a limited company in the UK, and then we've got the top one there, uh, company or which is for Republic of Ireland. We can see there the type IRL uh, FRS Limited. This is just um, I think of this as a master template how the how the sets of accounts are going to be formatted um, at the end. Just while we're here as well, um, we have another option, data set options here, so we can enable bookkeeping, invoicing and you know another couple of things i'm going to turn them on just to kind of show maybe through the demo here um some of the options that you may have in addition to just producing the final accounts so we go ahead and click ok on that and now you can see that a new company has or a new set of accounts under the same client uh, has now come into uh, into the system and remember i added the number one at the end so with that we'll just double click on that set um and now we can see that we're in that particular set of accounts for that client and the client is up the top there. So at this point, I'm going to uh, join the data in Sage 50 into accounts production. So we just go up to the top, click on tools. Um, we go down to product links, so Sage 50 slash instant accounts. We'll take a full transaction import. Um, now it's best practice at this point, obviously to take a backup of the data. Um, for this particular example, though, I'm just going to click no and press ahead. But again, uh, we would advise that you take a backup just to be, you know, fully safe and to have a, a, a restore point if something was to go wrong. So what we'll do is we, we've got an option here. So, OK, the data source. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll select from a default Sage 50 or an alternative. We'll just take a default for now because this is going to be the, the default uh, selection on the companies that's already there. So I've got a couple of companies. Uh, there's Gary's Motorcycles Limited. Um, now this is the logon name and password for the actual uh, Sage 50 uh, user. So I'll just enter manager and the manager's password. We'll click OK. 
you'll click on next um, we're going to bring this into an existing data set because we've already configured the masters um, for an Irish FRS 105 or 102 uh, entity so we're going to go ahead and just uh, so once we're here then we uh, click the company that we want the data to sit under so Gary's Motorcycles Limited and um, we're going to pick the second one on the list because uh, obviously that's the latest one that was created so it'll go from uh, earliest to latest uh, top to bottom so we click on that we can see now the actual file that's been picked up or the file location rather ends with the number one at the end uh, which will just be behind this screen now um, just to verify the uh, the correct data directory um, as we'd created earlier and just on the topic of imports, just a few considerations to be aware of. So the data is linked via product linked uh, from Sage 50 into accounts production. Manual adjustments can then be done in accounts production once the data is in there. Um, Re-importing any new data out of Sage 50 onto the same data set will overwrite manual adjustments only on that same data set. Um, any previously imported transactions, however, will remain uh, unaffected by the re-import. Okay, so at this point everything is imported and it's just going to go through a check of the mapping status. So you can see here there's been uh, three ledgers picked up from the company data set from Sage50 that uh, have not been mapped automatically. So we just click on mappings here and then it says, would you like to print the uh, unmapped nominals? We can just select no here um, and we can start then to choose um, whatever ledger account we want. So let's say, for example, a group sweep account. We can just double click on that and then okay which account in accounts production do you want that to be mapped into and because it's a bank account i'm just going to type in bank um, and i'll just say uh, i'll just take current account type 2 and click ok what we'll do is we'll do that for the remaining three okay so now that everything is mapped uh, we can just close this window and um, you see the system is going to double check the mappings again to make sure that uh, there's nothing left over or anything we've missed so once it does a check uh, through each ledger from Sage 50 into accounts production, uh, as I say, to ensure that every single balance is mapped and accounted for. Um, once this is done, we'll just click on uh, next. So we've got the message first of all that all accounts now are mapped and everything looks good. Um, we can print the list of mappings if you want, um, or you can scroll down, it'll be on screen as well. So it'll tell you like where each mapped account has gone to in accounts production. Uh, click on next. Um, and now it's basically saying that we're ready to finalize the whole the whole import and uh, produce this, the, the, the final sets of accounts. So now that everything is imported and mapped, um, we do have the option and probably advisable at this point just to you know double check a couple of things. Maybe the, the simple trial balance here just to make sure that it, now this is the trial balance, by the way, as it is in accounts production, um, as it was in Sage 50. And just to, you know, a quick kind of sense check to make sure everything looks good, uh, the 4.8 uh, million just ensure that that, uh, that all makes sense. We can also then do some journal corrections here as well, um, if required. We can have a look at customer balances. Again, this data is fed directly from uh, Sage 50. If we look at, let, let's take Lewis Hamilton here, for example, and we want to have a look at a statement, we can you can put in the, the date of the statement, it will pop up kind of what was sold, what was, uh, what was paid in and so on, settled on the debtor uh, ledger. Um, and then I suppose, again, once everything looks good and we're happy enough, um, we go then to, uh, well, there's two options here. We can go to database, which is where you can start adding in, um, I suppose, fringe items and bits around the actual statutory accounts as well, like, you know, the auditor, um, you have other things there, like notes on turnover, operating profit information, all that sort of stuff, um, uh, staff costs, auditors, remuneration. So basically any, any other disclosures that need to be made. For the actual, um, now, they're going to be blank here, obviously, because I haven't uh, populated any information in there, but you'll, you'll see basically when we go to produce the accounts, um, it will give us messages to basically say that, um, you know, we haven't filled in the suggested information on all of the pages. Um, so changes have been made. It's, it, it's recommended you recreate the balances. So what this means is recreate the balances from the import onto the report pages themselves. So we'll just go ahead and click yes. Um, and you can see there basically the the pages that's going to be going to be hit on this section. So you know we've got the contents page for the micro entry, for example, um, management accounts as well. So we don't just do statutory accounts and accounts production. We can do the management accounts as well. Um, everything from distribution costs and budget variances and so on. 
So once so everything looks good, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, hit selection. So this is where we decide, okay, what selection, what layouts, and so on do we want. Um, so I'm just going to go, I suppose, the first one there, company accounts, including dormant. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just double click on that. Um, you can see there the, the page information and what's going to be pulled in. We just go ahead and click OK. Now, just actually before I go ahead again, some of the I suppose some of the, the subheadings and some of the you know notes to the accounts, the pages they're on, or the page names. This is all kind of uh, mapped in the background, but we'll just go ahead and click OK. And once that's done, we can go ahead and click on the print button. Um, we'll have the option then to uh, obviously preview the file. Um, and then we have the option to print pages and notes, or just only the notes to the accounts. We'll go ahead with the pages and the notes. Uh, we hit OK. Um, so the first thing that we'd expect to see is, is that page basically saying that uh, you know we haven't uh, filled in certain areas of the final accounts and you know it'll just kind of draw our attention to that such as the notes and any other um, disclosures like the auditor's remuneration and stuff that hasn't been filled in and you know here, here's an example of it so the audit report sign date has not been entered the balance sheet no date of authorization and so on um, but if we scroll down past all this you'll see kind of how the report um, is uh, indexed out and um, so we cash flow statement there balance sheet uh, notes to the statements are on page 11 to 15 and so on um, you notice the director is, is completely blank because we haven't filled it in um, again it's a draft financial statement um, you'll see that it's time and date stamped as well at the top um, notes to the accounts and dividends around principal activities and so on uh, we've a bit about going concern as well um, all, all of the stuff that you'd expect to see on a, a set of accounts uh, year-end accounts um, we've got the appropriate p and l um, and, and, and that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, so everything from Sage 50 um, import, a little bit of remapping. In. Uh, we also have the option then if uh, for the IXBRL filing. So what we'll do is we'll just close this um, and just quickly show you where you can submit the IXBRL piece. So just over that there, click on the button and you'll see like that there's certain uh, I suppose statutory requirements for the filing itself that will be looked for. Um, and once again, because we haven't filled them in just purely for the sake of the demonstration here, um, it, it's actually preventing us from going any further. But um, in, in the final set and in an actual set of accounts where that data is present, uh, the IXBRL filing uh, won't be an issue. Um, so that's it guys, top to bottom, 50 into Sage accounts production and uh, thank you for, for listening and watching.